it's Belinda from Chateau Marai Kitchen and Lee's here as always, he's behind the cameras. Hello Lee. Hello, I'm here. Observing <laughs> and of course commenting on at every opportunity. No, I'm not. The, yeah, that's not, the that's not fair. That's not fair. I'm enjoying, <laughs> enjoying. So happy food St. Cooking. Patrick's Day everybody. Happy St. Patrick's Day. You might wonder what on earth has St. Patrick. So the celebration of the patrons, a very beloved patron saint of Ireland. What on earth has that got to do with living in a French chateau? I was wondering that. Well, you, when you said you were going to do this, mm. I was thinking, why St. Patrick in I've, France? I've got a link. Oh, I thought you might have. Uh, now, Lee and I have had our DNA tests done. Um, Lee, I seem to remember when you, your first results came through, you were rather disappointed because you came out as 98% British. That's right. And, and I, I was only disappointed, not yes. because of, of, of being British, oh, no. but I, I thought there might be a bit of an exotica in me. Um, and anyway, passing swiftly on, nothing exotic about Lee. He's 98% British. <laughs> no, since then they've updated it and I've got a bit of Italian and a bit of German as well. I can't so see it. There is a little bit of exotica there as well. And here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> <laughs> what have you got there? So I've got my, I've got my DNA is so complex. No, Because I'm Belinda. so interesting that, I'm, <laughs> that I needed to know, seriously, I needed to note them all down. Anyone so watching much. it, I didn't know no. Belinda was going to do this. So not surprisingly, because my father was Polish, my beloved father was Polish, so unsurprisingly, I come out with 43% Eastern European and Russian. Russian. What are you laughing at? Sorry, the fact that you just whipped yeah, it out 22, like that. Listen, <laughs> and you've done all this research. Take note. 22% Germanic European, right? Only 11% English. Hey, I thought I'd be more than that. 9% um, Swedish. 9% Scottish, 3% Norwegian, and, wait for it, and here's the link, 3% Irish. So you could say your ancestors yes. put it about a bit, so, darling, didn't they? Anyway, regardless of that, so today <laughs> we are going to celebrate that 3% of myself that relates to being Irish. I thought it was a very worthy link. So enough of that. Uh, moving swiftly on, you'll have seen this before. This is our local uh, English uh, English language uh, magazine, etc. Magazine. I write the food column in here. I know I've said it a few times. I don't know why Lee's still laughing. It's deadly serious now. And um, this month, unsurprisingly, because it's March, my food column is uh, all about St Patrick's Day and Irish recipes. So um, I've got a soda bread and I've got uh, a braised pork dish with cider and root vegetables, a colcannon which is made with celeriac and potato and today we're Sorry, going all sweet. I've never heard of colcannon, what is that? Colcannon, it's a mashed potato dish except in my recipe I've done half and half with celeriac which is delicious. So um, it's a mashed potato dish with cabbage and onions, basically, and bacon. Oh, so it's a dish, it's not a vegetable or something. Well, it is a side dish, or you could just, you know, but eat, you it, don't eat it all like up grow without a meat on cold the side. Cannon, like you grow a carrot or No, 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 it's a made up dish that you make up with oh, okay. mashed um, potato and uh, bacon oh, and. I've never heard of it before. Stuff like that. But today we're going to be all sweet. So normally we're very savoury. I'm a very savoury girl. I'm not really a sweet girl. Lee might choose to. Um, I give think you a you're a sweet opinion. girl, darling. That's very kind of you. Lee, Lee is a very sweet On gentleman. Um, well, gentleman. No one's ever called me that he before. He prefers a sweet. He likes sweet food very much. He likes sugary cakes and puddings and things like that. So today I'm going to be making a Guinness chocolate cake and an Irish brioche and butter. Pudding. I wonder why you had the Irish stout on the right, table. More about that in a moment. So I'm going to be perfectly honest right now, just to tell you that I've never made this cake before. This is the first time. So I've got the cheek to actually write up this recipe in a magazine and I've not made it. However, uh, this is my daughter's go-to chocolate cake recipe, my dear daughter Angela, and I asked her opinion and she said, Mum, 
put in this recipe. It's foolproof, it's fail safe, and it's delicious. So thanks, Angela. And off we go. So it's a Guinness cake. It's a Guinness chocolate cake, but hey ho, I couldn't find any Guinness at all locally. So but what I did find, Lee, look, was some Irish ales, well, an Irish stout, which I reckoned, what do you think, would be I more I think the stout is more probably like more like Guinness, because it's Guinness. a dark beer. The pale ale is more like an, an Indian pale ale. An Irish pale ale, but I yeah, thought... I think you should let me try the pale ale. I thought you might say that. And um, uh, you use the stout. Okay, so, um, but we are going to use um, 250 mils of this Irish stout. How much is in that? 330. So. Oh, good. You There's going to be some leftovers. I was just then. thinking, Lee, um, I just thought of your connection with, with Ireland and being Irish. And I think it's a very few occasions when I've actually seen you with a pint of Guinness in front of you. Okie dokie. So we've got 250 mils of. Oh, it looks disgusting. No, it doesn't. It looks stout like. Oh, it stinks. Oh, hang on. Yeah. Can I just get in there and have a smell of that? Well, you can in a minute. Hold on, it's all frothy. You, look, you, you'd never make a barmaid. <laughs> look at that. There's more head than there is toes. <laughs> oh, you'd get sacked get, from a pub in Ireland. get a little glass. Muddy Murphy's would sack you, Belinda. And you can have the rest of it. Oh, yeah. It Ooh. won't be much. Hey, that's not enough to <laughs> wet me whistle. Uh, how much have you got in there now? That's 250, that's it, and the rest is yours. It's all froth. Here we are. Oh, hang on a minute. I've got to get in there. Generous portions for yeah. you. Uh, generous portions. Small measures. Small <laughs> measures. I'll just uh, come and have a quick try of the genius. Cheers. The genius. Didn't even taste that. It doesn't taste like Guinness. Oh, that's what I'm using anyway. It's just a stout. Yes. Yeah. So, pour the Guinness into the saucepan with the froth. Do you want to lick the bowl? No, I don't want to lick the bowl, thank you. Okay, uh, add the butter. So, it's 250 grams of unsalted butter, which I measured out earlier because I didn't want to bore the pants off everybody. So I'm just going to cut it up to make the melting easier. So I'm going to take this over to the hob and just gently melt it over here. And while I'm gently melting, just a second. There we go. Um, Lee, I was reminiscing actually. So thinking about um, St Patrick's Day and. Uh, I've got a couple of links actually, but one that you and I particularly share is New York and St. Patrick's Day, isn't it? Oh my God. Well, well I... So we can't we, talk about that. We can, so... Um, Only the good bits. When Lee and I, actually, I think it was probably about a year after we met, we went to New York and it was our first big trip away together and, and it was the first time you'd ever been to New York actually, do you remember? Yeah. Um, and we, one of the things we did was actually visit St. Patrick's Cathedral on Fifth Avenue. That's right, which yeah, I remember if that. if any of you have been there or any of you live there and know it, it's a wonderful cathedral. It's really um, superb and, and, and fantastic. I find it fantastic to find such a splendid place just in the middle of the city. Just to me. In the middle of a high rise. I know, it, it's modern just an incredible place. Architectural vista. Mm. There's this ancient sort of cathedral. It's wonderful. And we went to Mass. Do you remember we went to Mass we, we, on we Sunday? We attended Mass. Uh, which was fantastic. And actually, um, so another link for me. So uh, I went to um, a Catholic uh, convent primary school in South London when I was a little girl. And the name of that convent was, um, uh, the, the, the nunnery, the, the convent was um, St. Francesca Cabrini. Uh, clearly that's an Italian name, Cabrini. And actually her name, St. Francesca Cabrini's name, and um, there's, there's a, like a plaque, is actually on the, the huge, magnificent door of St. Patrick's Cathedral, which was something I discovered years ago. So um, I was going to New York in the 80s quite a lot on business. And in fact, I was there once for the St. Patrick's Day Parade. 
Uh, but I remember finding this link, which I, I thought was a, yeah, a charming link back to my childhood. I don't know how Belinda ever got <coughs> linked up with me because mm, I was more sure of really. the faking school. Faking school? <laughs> well, you, the you've got to pick school. a pocket or two. two. <laughs> you've got to pick a pocket or two. And then we ended up <laughs> in a Catholic cathedral. So I'm just going to finish melting this, Lee, and then in a, I'm going to take it back to the table in a minute and add some other ingredients. So um, that's all melted. You can see that together that's the butter in the guinness or the irish stout in this case and i'm going to mix in 80 grams of cocoa powder belinda i can't help noticing but there's a a bottle unopened yeah it's going to remain unopened irish well. pale ale there it's definitely remaining and unopened. that's that's, that's being wasted that was for demonstration purposes only um, um i think that needs to be open and drunk and uh, maybe later and uh what's this oh 400 grams of caster sugar there we are so I'm just going to stir that all together until it's melted. So the next thing I'm going to do is mix together two eggs. See how well prepared I am? Two eggs. Shaken, not stirred. Well, I just cracked them on the side of the jug, that's the way I've always done it. So, um, so what are we putting in here? Uh, some creme fraiche, 150 mils of creme fraiche. This is actually a um, light big one. Big dollop. Yeah, big dollop. You could use a full fat. You could, you know, sometimes I've used, I use a lot of creme fraiche here in France because it's a very readily available ingredient, actually. Um, but, you know, if you can't get creme fraiche, you could always use some cream mixed with a little bit of lemon juice or you could use some sour cream, something like that. So that's 150 mils of creme fraiche and there's going to be one teaspoon of vanilla essence going Can in Can I there. just ask you, right, yes. I've, I've never eaten Guinness cake. Will it actually taste of Guinness? I think it'll add a delicious richness to the cake. I think I that's the general Angela's idea. I know Angela's made them before She, she raves about this cake. Oh, She's no. an absolute favourite. And she does give it to Geoffrey, who's only three years old, uh, and it's one of his favourites. So I don't think it can sort of taste all horrible and beery. Oh, how disappointing. Oh, sorry about that. So I'm just going to turn this rather curdled mess into something a little more straightforward. That's done now. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so in here I've got um, some sifted flour. This is very well organised today, am I? Give a minute. These are my icy ingredients for later. Can you see past those or shall I move them there? Yes. So here we go. I've got in there, I've got um, 280 grams of plain flour sifted with two and a half teaspoons of bicarbonate of soda. And what I'm going to do uh, in my large bowl with my trusty old fashioned electric, electric mixer, I don't have a freestanding mixer. Can we mixer. just explore that? It makes Got this. It for a it's a Russell Hobbs yeah. 1950s classic. What's wrong with that? Nothing. No, I was just saying, if that was a car, that would be much sought after. Actually, this isn't an old one, this is quite new. But do you know what? My, I've got a mixer, I've still got it, that I probably bought in my very first household when I was 21 years old, which is an awful long time ago and you know what it's still working <laughs> no it's still absolutely fine but it was just looking so tired and old-fashioned so i actually bought a new one it's not often you can say that that actually a piece of electrical kitchen equipment lasts more than 40 years i oh, know well there's, so you've amazing. got that in mrs beaton book and there's a lot of gadgets in there that there are, are still that we're still being using. used righty ho right i'm going to pour in the contents of the pan that's the chocolate is it Oh no, I'm going to, excuse me, I've done the wrong thing. This is the chocolate and the Guinness, the cocoa, the What's butter. What's with that Indian pale ale over there? That's what I want to know. Yeah, well that's, that's for later. Um, right, and this... It's not been opened. That's correct. 
This goes in here, it's looking a bit lumpy. Any of you have seen me make cakes on camera before will know why I tend to stick to savouries. So this is a bit of a leap of faith, this, but there we are. I think that bottle that looks unopened looks very lonely and sad. Do you know, it could be opened by means of cracking over the head or something. That's a awesome <laughs> way to open it. I think I might pop a cork on that one. Linda, Irish pear. I haven't had Irish pear. It's not very cold. I would have it when it's cold. Right. Okay. That looks really nice, actually. So those are the dry ingredients that I spoke about just now and I'm going to pour right pour this into there Can I just zoom in on that for a minute because yeah, uh, it smells think... wonderful it, yeah, that's why I'm zooming in. It does smell really, you really smell nice. smell the chocolate. Mm. Yeah, can we just see you stir that around a bit? Is that what you've got to do with I'm it? going to do the, use the mixer on this, use the beater. Well, the 1970s yeah. Russell Hobbs. A classic and vintage mixer. Do you want to lick the bowl? No, but I'd like to pop the cork on that IPA. <laughs> right, actually. off we go. So that's done. I've been doing that for a couple of minutes. It looks to me like it's all very well incorporated. I'll just take those out. Make sure everything's all together. Just checking. I'm just going to pan the camera around. Yes, the cork is still. I'm going to put that in the bloody fridge. Right, yeah. there we go. That's out of the way. Right. Um, so oh. I prepared the cake tin. How nice of you. Voila. <laughs> and do you know what I'm going to do? I think I'm going to actually put a little bit of butter around the outside. Hold on, I'm going to do it with this. I'm going to take a tiny drop of this butter. and just spread it around the outsides of the tin. I've already greased the base and put some grease proof paper in it, but I definitely don't want this to stick. I'll do. Right, so just pour that into the tin. So I've preheated the oven to um, 160 degrees fan and I'm just going to pop it in the oven. That's the fan oven. And that should take about 45 minutes. But we won't be able to ice it until it's completely cold. So in the meanwhile, I'm gonna clear this away and start making the brioche and butter pudding. So the time has just gone off. Uh, it smells like it's cooked. I'm just going to go and check, Lee. So I've got my handy uh, toothpick to check whether it's cooked or not. If it comes out clean, it means it's ready. Mm. Oh, it smells nice. Mm -hmm. Look at Ooh. that. It's slightly sunk in the middle, but I'm not, I'm not too concerned about that. It's going to have a lovely um, frosting on the top. So you won't see that. So Can let's I just, just have check. a look at the top before you cut yeah. it? I'll just have a look. I'm not at cutting it, I'm just putting a... Oh, looks dark and yeah. mysterious, doesn't yeah. it? So dark I'm just going mysterious. to... Ooh, just like Guinness. Just going to um, do the skewer test. Yeah, and that's clean, see? And that means it's cooked. So if it came out and still had some soft mix on it, I'd put it back again for five minutes or right, so, but okay. it's done. So what I'm going to do is just leave that to cool in the tin. Just going to pop it over there at the back. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get on with the brioche bread and butter pudding. So we're running a bit behind. While the cake was in the oven, as soon as we put it in the oven, our neighbours, Joan and James, arrived. 
uh, knocked on the door, which was great. So they came in, had a cup of tea, but they brought some lovely cream eclairs with them. So we had to sit down and eat one of those. So we're full of cake. I'm not sure you're going to want to eat any of this cake afterwards, Lee, because we've had quite a lot already. Um, but yeah, so it's put us a bit behind, but I've now got everything ready, I hope, to make the brioche Excuse me, pudding. what was that you just moved? Let me just... Um, this. And yes, yeah, can I just... Um, perhaps zoom in on that so that is a bottle of irish cream liqueur right so uh, irish very cream liqueur. To one with a very a name beginning with the same letter baileys you mean anyway Dash nice shout out to baileys right um oh, so yeah I right have... let's zoom back out again hold on a minute just bear with me bear with bear with there you go. I've got my buttered dish already, oval, nice oval dish, and um, that needs to fit into a baking dish, which I'm going to half fill with boiling water, as in a bain marie, to cook it in the oven. And that oval dish, or whatever size dish you use for this pudding, which is delicious, uh, needs to fit into a baking tray so that you can put some boiling water in it. So just check that you've got one that fits before you start. Um, so it's a brioche and butter pudding. And brioche is very widely available here in France. Um, I think this is a sort of children's breakfast thing here in France. What do you think, Lee? Because they have shelves and shelves and shelves of brioche, uh, all sorts of different varieties and all sorts of different brands. If that's a children's breakfast, then I'm a child because I, I love it. Brioche, yeah, I love brioche. Yeah. Yeah. Especially with that homemade jam that you do, that strawberry one. Oh, yeah. I really like it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to melt uh, 50 grams of butter and I will see you in a minute because I'm going to use that to um, brush onto the brioche. Who doesn't love bread and butter pudding? It's a nursery food. It's a childhood memory uh, certainly for me um so this is just a very delicious i guess a more grown-up version really of a bread and butter pudding using the brioche using the um, irish cream liqueur as a flavor i've also got some cinnamon and nutmeg um, to go in here as well just to give it an added richness of flavor so we need 300 grams of the brioche this is 450 grams so i'm going to use about two thirds of this bung it all in I know, no, I know someone close big. by that will eat all of that. Well, you'll eat anything that's left, won't you? <laughs> so, yeah, so, <laughs> two, three, four. Bung it all in, then put some extra of that six, cream six, stuff in as six. well. I'm just going to see how many slices. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So what's two thirds of twelve? Eight, isn't eight, it? Eight, yeah. So what have we got there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That should be enough. Lee, look, and you've got some left for your breakfast there. Oh, lovely. Nice. Oh, thank you, Belinda. Very well. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, brush the brioche slices with the melted butter, and then I'm going to place them uh, in some sort of decorative order in the dish. So, uh, excuse me while I crack on with this. So next I'm going to scatter over these raisins. You could use sultanas or other types of dried fruit. I'm just going to check the uh, amount. That's 100 grams of sultanas. Do you know what you can also use for this pudding, Lee? You know your favourite panettone? Mm. That lovely Italian um, enriched bread dough Christmas treat. In fact, I've still got one because I... We either get given one at Christmas, don't we? Or if I don't get given one, I tend to buy one. And then they're such enormous things, aren't they? And, and a couple of months later, I look at it and think, we haven't, <laughs> we haven't even started this panettone. So this is a very good pudding that you can actually make with a uh, panettone. And then you, you wouldn't need to add so many raisins. My obviously. problem with panettone is, once it's open, well, you can't it's, stop it's eating gone. it. It's gone. It's so, so delicious. Nice. You can yeah. just rip off pieces, can't you? Yeah, oh, that's what I dunk do. Dunk them in your coffee. Bit coffee. Absolutely oh, a piece of so, uh, so for, for spice flavouring, um, I've got a teaspoon of dried cinnamon and I'm going to add some grated nutmeg. Now, um, 
grating nutmeg with one of these I think is an entire waste of time and usually results in me grating my fingers into the uh, bowl. So um, I saw a wonderful method for grating nutmeg on the TV a, a while back which is actually using a small knife. So, so it actually works really really well you just scrape it with a knife basically instead of grating it you get the same sort of result. I think it's easier. So some grated nutmeg is going to give it a really delicious flavour. Okay, and also some powdered cinnamon. Just try and spread it out quite evenly because you don't want a great big lump of cinnamon. Or maybe you do. <laughs> That's probably enough actually. So to make the custard, just put all the custard ingredients into a bowl. I'm going to whisk it with a hand whisk this time. You can, I mean, some recipes I've used in the past for a bread and butter pudding, you heat the milk or boil the milk and then put the eggs in and then strain the eggs. And this is a whole lot easier. Just do it as a cold mix. So basically three eggs. Um, while you're doing that, Belinda, I just yeah. want to zoom in on the um, dish that you've just created. Yeah, if you don't which mind. dish? Because it, it looks amazing. Oh, what, the bread and butter, the bread and yeah, the, um, it, the brioche? It does look Oh, great. Do you know my favourite bits? Look at those, that. I know, when you get all the fruit. Oh, you get the that big, looks big mouthful absolutely of fruit. fantastic. Look nice, it? Yeah. Oh, thank you. So, we want some full milk for this. So, we're going to add 500 mils of full milk, which in France typically comes in a carton. So uh, that's a jug of this. It's just like a, a very enriched eggy custard, basically. What's happening with the Baileys, Belinda? That's I, I've noticed that's not been opened yet. No, it will. It will. Would you like to open it, actually? I'd love to open the Baileys. Yeah. I'll give you that. Okay, hang on. I'll come round and do that. Because hitherto, oh, I've been do that round here. surplus to requirements. Hardly. I've been um, behind the camera there, okay. working hard as you can That's imagine. That's 50 grams of caster sugar. Let me just give it a bit of muscle here. Let's there we the go. Topping. Um, oh, this actually, is that smells just like bacon. It's um, 150 this is, mils of double cream, which won't come out. Look, oops, there. This is called creme liqueur Bayard. Bailey. Bailey. Or Bayard. And it's a French, French one. Could you measure so, me out some, actually? I certainly would. Could yeah. you put? Um, well, do you need you need a measuring jug, which I have here. No. Um, let me have a look. I've got one here. Oh right, okay. Where's your measuring jug? Here. Yeah. Just pour me a hundred mils, please. Just, yes, just of to course. There. Of course. A hundred mils. Three eggs, caster sugar, double cream, whole milk, Irish meals. cream there we liqueur. Are. And here's my measuring mm -hmm. jug. No, not for me, thank you. <laughs> yeah, not 100 mils, but just uh, a small mills, a bush mills. Oh. Okay. Teaspoon of vanilla. That's about that. Mm. Oh, try that. No, I really don't want it at the moment, honestly. I will afterwards. Tastes really nice, actually. It needs it needs to be on ice, I think. But yes, oh, very okay, good. This. All together in there, and then Thank whisk. You for let me help there, Belinda. My pleasure. <laughs> yeah, and he's never never concerned about helping when there's a bottle involved. Oh, that's unkind. Unkind. But true. But true. <laughs> <laughs> Strong right arm for this. There we are, I think that's okay. Oh, it smells lovely. Mm. You smell that liqueur. So then I'm going to, I've just whisked the custard, it's just all the ingredients are incorporated, nothing, you don't need to whisk it for ages. And I'm just going to pour it gently over the um, brioche mixture here. 
just, I'm just make sure everything's While you're doing that, I'm just going to zoom in on that because... Uh, How long will that take in the oven? I think it takes about 40 minutes, this recipe. Mm. Because it cooks in the, um, in the bain-marie in quite a slowish oven because then you get a really nice creamy result um, with a nice crispy topping. That's what you're looking for. So that's all in. And then just make sure, just push it down gently so that everything is covered by the eggy mixture. I've got to tell you, when I was a boy at school, there used to be a, a bakery. I used to go to school in Waterloo. Mm -hmm. And there was a bakery in one of the back streets of Waterloo. It was an old school Victorian style bakery. And they used to do bread and butter pudding. And one of the Bread things, pudding or bread and butter pudding? Bread and butter pudding. So the brown one or the white one? No, the brown one. Because the brown one's bread pudding. No, it was bread pudding. Yeah. And me and my mates. Because bread and butter pudding that, would be too soft to pick up and... Okay, well there were six <laughs> of us and we used to call in and get a slice of bread pudding mm. on the way to school at 8.30 in the morning. Well that's what the bakers would have done with their leftover bread from the day previously. So they didn't waste anything, they didn't throw it away. And they would use the leftover bread and just make bread pudding and, it was, and sell it for a, were, cheap for a few pence. Two uh, ladies in there and they loved us because we were all schoolboys and yeah. they used to love us coming in. We used to have loads of banter with them and it was literally in the back streets of Waterloo. Hmm. And you know, in it's the changed dark, a bit now. it's changed a lot now. But that wasn't all back in the days, ago, it? it was it was pretty poor it was area. A long time ago. And yeah. um, I remember it was like Victorian streets mm. and it was dark mm. when you got went to school in the winter and we used to have this bread pudding and these ladies used to light up our lives as kids. Mm. It was wonderful. I'm going to finish this off now. This is three tablespoons of uh, Demerara sugar, so a crystallised brown sugar. They call it cassonade here in France. So I'm just going to sprinkle Cassonade? Cassonade. Ooh, sprinkle, sprinkle, there we are. Sprinkle it over the top, that will give it a nice crunchy, crispy topping. Uh, and then, Lee, I need to boil a kettle, actually. So, I'll just pop off and do that. Well, I can do that for you. Could you? I realise this actually needs a 30-minute soak. Um, so that's actually had nearly that now, as we've been fiddling Sorry, around. Sorry, what does a 30-minute soak well, mean? Well, so the, the bread, the brioche, and the butter, and all the raisins and spices and the custard, Yeah. Uh, you just leave them together in the dish, for about half an hour. Before that, you put before it, in, you put it ah, in the oven. Okay, you're right. And then that allows the custard to soak through into the brioche oh, okay, and okay. makes it even more delicious. I just thought you just poured it straight in and put it in yeah, the oven. Yeah, no, you it? need a, a little time for soaking. So I'm just okay. gonna pop that over there for another 10 minutes or so, and then that can go in the oven in the bain-marie of boiling water, which we'll need to boil again. Okay. But in the meanwhile, um, is I this am the Guinness to, cake? Well, I'm going to try and take it out of its um, oh, cake. Oh, here we tea. go. Now, this is where we have the You know fun. this can go very wrong, I know, don't you? and it has gone very wrong in past. I know, and I'm going to try and be a very brave soul with my cake, which I've never made before. So I'm going to loosen its stays. Oops. Hang on a minute, I'm going to zoom in. <laughs> don't do anything. And Because I breathe. think everyone wants to know <laughs> if this is going to turn out good or bad or indifferent right so, I've loosened so go on I've, I've now zoomed in on I've the cake loosened it. oh it's quite hot at the bottom still it might be a bit early to take it out actually yeah I, i've had that said about me i've got a hot bottom really yeah oh 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 misty you like that do you there you go that I'm came try, out i'm going to try a bit of this cake on the um, right hang on a minute i'm going to zoom back out again sorry guys there we go that's really nicely Ah. That is really um, intensely chocolatey. It must be the stout that does that. Mm. Okay. I've never had a cake baked in beer before. I've never I'm try and get it off its base. The whole thought of it seems odd. Do you need a plate to put that on? No, I'm going to cool it on the rack. Okay. 
it might be a bit soon. This is where normally we have problems, right. isn't it? It is, it is. Well, it's the, it's the moment of truth, isn't it? Do you know what I, I always find amusing is occasionally you'll see on the TV, maybe on a, a, on a cookery show or a contest or something, where the cook leaves the base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um, it, and yeah. that really is an unfigivable omission. You it's cannot, a sin. Well, you can't. I mean, it's how can a you do sin. Because the whole point is... It's a baking, is, is, caking you know. sin. There we go. It's come off. But there is a bit of paper underneath. But I'm not going to take that off yet because that would make me too nervous because it's still quite warm. So there's the lovely chocolate cake. We have to leave that to be completely cool. I'm going to zoom in on the, the cake. On. Do you want to have a look at it? I do want everyone to see the I think cake. It looks absolutely gorgeous, actually. And the colour is so dark. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Right. Lovely. Um, and I'm just going to swivel round to see if we can see. The other one. That's going in the oven now. I'm going to fill this up about halfway with the boiling water and the oven is the same temperature as it was for the cake which is very handy. That's 160 degrees fan and it will be in there for about 40 minutes. Do you know what? I, uh, there's a suggestion here. Right? Yeah. What's that? Um, for those of you watching this vlog um with the electric fan ovens i'd be very cautious about putting a bain marie in because the water condensates um and rises and it actually drips back down onto the baking tray and it gets into the electric element which is normally at the bottom and it can cause a failure your oven so I think that oven will be okay actually. yeah this is all right it's it an happened, arbor. well it happened to us last week yeah we and had... I made some bread and I read somewhere that you can use a cold oven as a proving oven for dough if you put a dish of boiling water in the bottom of the oven and put your it was some bread rolls that I wanted to prove and the proving was fantastic the bread rolls were fantastic but my oven didn't work for a week yeah what <laughs> because happened the condensation had as all, said, yeah it all dripped back down yeah. and, and went into the electric element yeah. and we had to leave it to dry out before we could use the oven. The next thing, so in a moment, don't do it. I'm going to make the icing for the Guinness cake. So while the gorgeous dark chocolate cake is cooling down and while the brioche pudding is in the oven, I'm going to put together the topping, the frosted topping for the Guinness cake. Um, now this, again, this is the first time I've made this cake, as I've said, and Actually, the last time I made a creamy topping for a cake, uh, which was actually televised, it was a complete disaster. And uh, instead of sitting nicely on top of the cake, slid all the way down the sides. Do you remember that one, Lee? Yeah. <laughs> it yes, was rather amusing. Yeah. So I'm going to see, once again, if I can actually achieve this. Um, so I've got icing sugar here. I'm just going to check how much I've got here. So I've got 300 grams of icing sugar, which I sieved because it was quite, had quite a lot of lumps in it. I don't think you have to sieve it, but I think it had been in the packet for a while and was a bit lumpy. So that's that. Um, and that's unsalted butter. And that is 50 grams of unsalted butter. And what I'm going to do apparently is I'm going to beat this together with my electric um, whisk until it's like a sort of sandy texture. Excuse me, your vintage. My electric. vintage. Well, Actually, this is my new. new no, this is my new version. No, the vintage one is really vintage. Seriously. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm vintage. Oh, I thought that was old. No, I'm the vintage. Oh, this darling. Is, this is new. Like a, a a fine wine, you've aged a very. Well. So what I'm going to do? So excuse the noise, <laughs> and it might take me a while, but I'm. Noise that looks thing. all right. Are the new machines quieter than that? Probably, but this is a budget version, um, unlike me. When was that made? Version. What is it? Um, uh, Russell Hobbs, vintage 1970s. And then you add, I'm ignoring Lee as you can tell everybody, I'm yeah, going as to usual. add 125 grams of cream cheese and mix it on a low speed. 
Did they I have see. low speeds in those days with the little hustle anyway. thing? So um, it's just one speed. Yeah. No, it's got five speeds. Oh. Hang on a minute, Let me, I'm going to zoom in on it, just so you can see it. Ready? Yeah. Okay, it's still a bit lumpy, so I'm just going to give it a bit of a whiz. So I'm now going to turn this onto a medium speed, and it says, beat it until it's light and fluffy. And I'm not talking about your hair, so right, <laughs> just go. <laughs> it's going to crack on. Medium speed, that's three. My hair is light and fluffy, darling. It's in light grey. Light grey and fluffy. Fluffy whiskish. Fluffy with a fringe on top. There's a song there. I think that's done now. So I'm just going to take those off. I'm going to pop that in the fridge just to make sure it's nice and cold before it goes on the cake. Like I don't want it to set too hard or it'll drag all the top, the crumbs off the top, won't it? But anyway, okay. So I'm just going to give it the test taste. Is that going on the Guinness cake? Mm. Oh, right. well, that's really nicely. Do you want to try? No. Okay. Um, do you know what I was thinking? Um, Oh dear. Here well, we I was go. no. It, so, oh. doing a St. Patrick's Day tribute, if you like, it got me to thinking about um, what it used to mean to me, St. Patrick's Day, when I was a child. So, I was a bit glib earlier on, chatting on about being 3% Irish, ha ha ha. But actually, and I think I mentioned the school I went to was a Catholic convent school in South London. And so, we were a very mixed group of children. You can imagine this was in the 1960s. And. Um, we were from all over the world, but we had a lot of uh, lovely little Irish um, schoolmates. And obviously St. Patrick's Day was something that they celebrated. But also, and, and this was of importance, I think. So our, um, our um, head nun, our mother superior, her name was Mother Patrick. So St. Patrick's Day was actually her name day. So we had a very, very big celebration on St. Patrick's Day. We used to sing happy, happy St. Patrick's Day. We used to sing a hymn called Hail Glorious St. Patrick, Dear Saint of Our Isles. We used to go to Mass. And I, but what I remember with great joy was the tea that we had in the afternoon, uh, which comprised mainly green jelly and green meringues. I have no idea in the 1960s what they put in the food to make it bright emerald green, but we ate it. So, fun memories. It smells ready, the brioche pud. I'm just going to go and have a look. Ooh, lovely, yeah, look at that. Oh, oh let me zoom in on it, let me zoom in. Hold, hold, hold your heavy. Stand down, Margaret. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Right, I'm gonna have to, oh, gosh. That's quite a move. So let's pop that over there. Let's take it out of its, um, oh yeah, that's lovely. Take it out of its ban marie Pop it on there. And the next thing I'm going to do is to ice the Guinness cake. So um, while you were over in the cottage, Lee, uh, I actually was terribly courageous and took the paper off the back um, and nearly dropped the whole thing and actually broke a piece off the top in so doing. Anyway, I managed to get it onto this platter and now I'm going to put the icing on the top. There's a depression in the middle. It's like the weather, isn't it? There's a depression in the middle of the cake, which I'm going to fill. Fill it up with icing. With icing. This is going to look really good, isn't it? It looks nice as it it's is. It's going to actually. look like a 
pint of Guinness. Am I going to get to try it? Well, what do you think? Do you think you've been good enough? No, I'm joking. Of course you can. <laughs> For anyone watching, you would know that that is not the truth. What, have <laughs> you been would, good enough? No, she would never oh. let me try this stuff. Oh, that's I've not never true. been good enough. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, right, I'm going to give it a quick swirl. Well, I'm going to zoom in while you're doing this oh, because no. if there's any. <laughs> right, here we go. This is your your swirling skills. Do you know, I don't even possess such a thing as a turntable that I know many professional That's fine. No, it's cake fine. bakers have the turntable that they can do this on. Oh, look, and yeah, I, I don't want to go too far because but I don't want the cake crumbs to start appearing through the Do you top. know what? Most but people actually, would be doing exactly what you're doing. I wouldn't worry bad, about it, it because, it, you know, it's not professional cooking. What do you reckon? That looks like a pint of Guinness. Yeah, it looks like a pint of Guinness. A white top <sighs> and black roots. So that's my first attempt at um, an Irish a Guinness chocolate cake made with a French Irish stout. <laughs> and um, no, that was an actual Irish it was stout. An Irish stout bought in France. Bought in and, France, but um, brewed in Ireland. A brioche and butter pudding with a whiskey cream do you call it a liqueur whiskey cream whiskey cream whiskey irish cream i didn't see any mix. whiskey going in that there's a whiskey uh, whiskey cream you know the cream the baileys oh That's baileys whiskey cream, isn't it baileys is not whiskey isn't it what is it no it's a creme liqueur whiskey is whiskey She's going to test me now. I'm going to test you. <laughs> I have this all my life, viewers. Every time I say anything, I'm checked on it. <laughs> Whiskey. Oh, I'm wrong again. So you know, you know, I'm five percent, three percent Irish. This is five percent whiskey. Three, five. So this is more whiskey than I'm Irish. Come on. <laughs> okay, you win. <laughs> What I found in the garden. Do you think that's a shamrock? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Or is it a three leaved clover? I think it's a three leaf clover. Really. So I just thought, you know, if you really wanted to go absolutely nutsy, you could do a little um, Irish decoration, couldn't you, for St. Patrick's Day? What do you think? Do you know what the shamrock. Um, as I understand it, St. Patrick, who was a Christian... Um, Hold on, I want to zoom in on the cake, because that looks very pretty, what oh, you've done there, you. Belinda. He really um, brought nice. Christianity to Ireland, as I understand it, in the 5th century. Uh, he was a bishop of Ireland as well. Apparently he was born in 387. That's only recently... But he wasn't Ireland. Irish, was he? No, he wasn't. He was Roman, actually. Yeah. Anyway, um, apparently he used the three-leaf, the shamrock, to describe the Holy Trinity, so God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Apparently that's what it came to represent. So, uh, yeah, there you go. St. Patrick's Day cake, St. Patrick's Day pudding. Happy St. Patrick's Day to all of you. Lee, do you want to come and say goodbye to everybody? I would like to, yeah. By the way, Lee hasn't been good enough to have a piece of cake. I've been a bad boy. Sorry. It's because I had, I had a glass of the... And he had an eclair earlier on as oh, well. I had an eclair and, and a, a slice of cake. Another slice of cake. Uh, <laughs> Guinness or stout. Anyway. So, um, hope you've enjoyed uh, St. Patrick's Day with us in France with somebody who's 3% Irish and therefore really has no right whatsoever to it. I've got no Irish in me <laughs> at all, but I'm up for a celebration, but whatever the reason. All of you out there who are Irish or have Irish family or live in Ireland or who love Ireland, happy St. Patrick's Day. And we're so glad that you've watched us. We are so happy that you continue to watch us and like our channel. Please subscribe to it. Please tell your friends and your family we would love some more subscribers. We love you to like us. It does help us. And we will see you very I soon again. I have to say Shut also. Shut but Lee has to have the last word for <laughs> you. You've said everything. What do you want uh, to all say? I was going to say, we've had 
so many nice comments. Yeah, thank from, you very much. From you guys that watch us. That it lifts us mm. up, it really it does. does. So thank you, thank you very much. And we'll see you again very soon. Bye. Bye from Chateau Marais.